Okay, the next topic we talked about a little bit in the last uh, lesson, bases. Um, acids and bases both come from water. And uh, acids kind of have a better PR group of people, public relations, because uh, everybody's heard of acids. Very few people have heard of bases, but they can be just as dangerous of acids as acids uh, if they are uh, in strong concentration form. If they're diluted, it's not bad. The only thing is you don't want to taste them, unlike acids, which you uh, taste quite often anytime you drink uh, fruit juices or sodas. Bases, you don't want that. Uh, and as soon as you taste it, you know right away. Um, so let's let's get into this. Um, any minute now. I got the feeling that the board is going to fight me again today. That's great. Uh, so let's let's go back to what we're talking about here. H2O according to a radius and both sides of now uh, break down one time out of a million and give us hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And in the last lesson we said that this was the acidic part and so that means that this is going to be the base, the hydroxide. So the Iranian definition of a base is anything that gives off hydroxides. negative is the hydroxide ion. So this is the issue that Brooks and Lowry had. They didn't particularly care for this definition because it excluded an extremely large portion of compounds that when you dissolve in water had a pH that was greater than 7. pH greater than 7 means you are dealing with a base. So in fact, blood is slightly basic. Even though we consume a lot of acids, our blood is a pH right around 7, 7, 7, 5. Um, so it's, it's what we call a buffer system. So this acid and base mixed in it, but it's more basic than it is acidic. So it has a pH greater than 7. Uh, but the issue is that, when, as Brooks and Lowry was, was saying, uh, is that when you dissolve certain compounds that don't end in hydroxide, uh, they turn out to have pHs uh, greater than 7. So what's going on with that? Well, let, let's talk about that. But first, let's uh, make sure we understand how we can identify the fact that we have uh, a base when we have that. So we, let's look at properties of bases. First property is that it tastes bitter, has a bitter taste. If you've ever accidentally got soap or shampoo in your mouth, you know right away you're dealing with a base. Another way that you know you have a base is if a substance that you're dealing with has an oily texture, particularly in water. It gets all uh, slippery, um, and if you were to spill like uh, some kind of body wash or shampoo on the floor, you know it could be really slick. So it's best to let the water run, um, run on it and get, uh, rinse it out of the floor that you're standing on before you actually step on the soap or, or the soapy mixture. Um, and the last one is that it neutralizes acids. In other words, if you had an acid and you pour some base in there, if you have an equal amount of acid and base, assuming that the number of particles are the same, the pH is going to turn out to be 7. That's what neutralizes means. It's become a neutral substance. Okay? Now, there are two types of bases. Lesson. If it's organic, 
it's going to have a carbon hydrogen bond. So there's going to be some combination of carbon hydrogen mixed in there. If it's inorganic, there will be no carbon hydrogen bond. Now, as it turns out, the inorganic compounds tend to be uh, the one that Arrhenius prefers, and the organic bases turn out to be the Brunson and Lowry preferred ones. And we're not even going to get into the Lewis thing. So let's talk about the inorganic compounds or inorganic bases. So here is probably the most common inorganic base, sodium hydroxide. It has the OH on the end, you know right away that's a base just by looking at the compound. And there's no carbon, hydrogen bond, no carbon at all for that matter. So we know that this is an inorganic base. So you just name this based upon the name of the metal here, which is sodium, and the name of the OH, which is hydroxide. So this is sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide uh, is also known as lye. You ever heard the expression lye soap? Soap is made out of lye uh, with a combination of some kind of animal fat, as a, and I suppose plant fat as well, because there's a lot of companies that make uh, non-animal based soaps. But most soap is animal based to take the fat of the animal treat it with sodium hydroxide, and then treat it with something else, and then this white layer comes up, and then they add all kinds of colors and perfumes and all that good stuff. Uh, it's also used in, in tanning leather. Uh, so if you're familiar with the leather artistic stuff, uh, sodium hydroxide plays a big role in that, which is why you have to use gloves when you tan the metal. Um, another one is calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is a very common base as well. Calcium is one of the more plentiful elements in, uh, in the earth, uh, in, in the human body for that matter. Your teeth and your bones are made of calcium. Uh, calcium hydroxide is also known as a slate lime. Even the name gives me a crease. Whoa, what does slate mean? Sounds awful. Uh, almost sounds like slimy, except it's not slimy. Although, I guess it would be a little slimy because it is a base, and bases tend to be oily, slimy. Um, but we actually, uh, uh, this is used in uh, producing uh, certain um, uh, borders, shall we say. If you let this uh, dehydrate, this will turn into lime. And lime is uh, our lime mortar, so that's kind of the thing. And the last one is just one of many possibilities, but here's one of all the transition metals, which means that if we name this, we have to name the ion for this. So this, we know hydroxide is negative one, we got two of them, and so this is positive two right here. So the name for this compound is iron two hydroxide. We didn't have to do that with this one right here because calcium is the main group metal. So we just call it calcium hydroxide. We don't care about the two charge. But here we do because iron is a transition metal and you have to identify the charge and the name. Um, we use iron 2 hydroxide uh, for um, uh, water treatment. So um, the reason why is because a lot of water um, has minerals in it, and this will form double displacement reactions with the hardcore metals. Even though iron is considered a, a hard metal, it's a hard water consists of some iron. But we can also use it to kill other particles within the water besides the inorganic uh, stuff. 
So these all end in OH. That tells us that we are dealing with bases. So these Arrhenius or inorganic bases are really easy to identify. 